In this episode of Dollars and Cents, we'll be talking about the recommendations of the Census Scientific Advisory Committee, which had a meeting last week. And present there was Mario Morazzi, an economist and committee member. Basically, we just want to talk about the results of that fall meeting and which points of the recommendations pertain to Puerto Rico. So thank you for being here today. Thank you, Michelle. So let's talk about what happened at the meeting. First of all, this, the 2020 census is coming up. So what are the unique challenges to doing the census in Puerto Rico, and how did, change, how did things change after Hurricane Maria? Well, uh, doing the, the decennial census in Puerto Rico is always a, a challenge for the Census Bureau. We have a, a quite a challenging topography. We have a challenging addressing structures. And you know how hard it is to find physical addresses in Puerto Rico sometimes. But that challenge became so much more exacerbated after the hurricane. Um, you know, some estimates as high as 120,000 housing stock, housing units lost. And so when you lose that amount of houses, then, you know, the way you do a census has to change completely. And, you know, the good news is that the good folks over at the Census Bureau have, uh, have taken the time to adjust the plan for the 2020 census in light of Hurricane uh, Maria and the destruction it, it, it laid on Puerto Rico's yeah, housing stock. How so? So they're going to be doing what's known as an update leave strategy, um, which they had been planning not to do in Puerto Rico. Uh, and it's a strategy that they've done before in, in Puerto Rico, but it, it basically means that they, um, they actually are going to visit all of the houses physically and all the streets in Puerto Rico. The Census Bureau, uh, the Senior Census uh, employee, will visit each housing unit and will uh, update the addresses uh, ha by hand and then will leave a questionnaire uh, so that it can be answered by, by the household. Um, before it was going to be a much more sort of simpler address canvassing without the update leave, but with the, the amount of houses that had been destroyed, had been changed, uh, even roads that have moved uh, location, uh, they no longer trust the information that they've had for so long and they'd rather now really just go get up boots on the ground and, and check house to house. So that sounds like a massive undertaking. Is this going to require more people, more manpower, more time? It is a massive undertaking, and, and yes, it does require a little bit more uh, resources uh, from the Census Bureau, but, uh, but fortunately um, they've been able to make uh, you know, the budget somehow uh, work, and they're, they're planning on, on going ahead and, and doing update leave, which is going to be really important to make sure that the 2020 Census in Puerto Rico is as high quality as possible, counting the, all of the people in the right place, and no one left out, and no one double, double counted, which is really important for absolutely everything that comes after the 2020 census. We're going to have these, this data for a whole decade, and we're going to, this data is going to depend, determine federal funding, it's going to determine how we plan, it's going to determine policies, it's going to determine how our economy functions, it's going to determine how we measure the demographics afterwards. So it's, uh, it's really a, a, a really important exercise that gets done every, every 10 years. It's, needs to be done by the Constitution of the United States as well as by the Constitution of Puerto Rico. And then it also, as you might know, it has important political implications as Senate and, and House uh, redistricting takes place in Puerto Rico based on this data. So we want to make sure that when the data is ready for use, it is of the highest quality so that it is unquestionable. When does it start? So the uh, actual census will you know, get going in early 2020, but actual census day is April 1st, uh, 2020. So when people fill in the questionnaire, they're going to be filling it referencing how many people lived in their house, how many people s spent the night in their house that night, April 1st, 2020. Okay. Now let's talk about what happened at the meeting. Um, you know, what are some of the key issues that were brought up, particularly, again, those specific to Puerto Rico? Sure. So the Census Scientific Advisory Committee is a committee created by congressional law to provide scientific advice to the Census Bureau on how it should go about doing a census all over the United States. And this is not no easy undertaking. And so, and it's not just the decennial census, it's all of the census data uh, uh, in a whole. And so this was my first meeting. I'm really honored to be appointed, probably the first Puerto Rican appointed to this committee, uh, appointed by Secretary Wilbur Ross, Department of Commerce. And, you know, it was uh, really a fascinating meeting, really some of the brightest minds from all over the United States uh, who are very knowledgeable about data and about uh, census activities um, coming together to provide, you know, our external scientific advice on how to go about uh, performing a census. So there's uh, a lot of things going on. There's, um, for instance, 
an important debate about the citizenship question. Right. Um, it's, uh, it's a proposal by the, by, the, uh, pre by the administration of the federal government to include a question that uh, asks people, you know, are you a citizen of the United States? And it's very controversial. Um, it's, uh, there's important uh, groups of people who believe that this question will make uh, you know, some groups be hesitant to fill in the questionnaire, uh, fearful, for instance, undocumented migrants. Um, and there's other folks who, who feel that you know, uh, even with that additional you know, uh, fear, the Census Bureau can do certain things to compensate for that and still get the sort of participation uh, that everyone needs. Um, I, I myself, I come into this debate with a set of mixed feelings. I, I am concerned about adding a question and its impact. And why? Why? Well, I mean, if when you add when you add a question that hasn't been asked for a very long time, and it's a very sensitive question to certain groups of people who might feel that the government is using this information to find out where they are and and, and deport them, then you know you might not. So here's the here's the bottom line. The point of the census is not to have. A census of how many people there are that are citizens it's the point is to have a total count of all the people no matter if they are citizens uh, resident aliens non-resident aliens undocumented migrants you know you want to count everyone no matter what their legal status is in the United States and, and that, that would affect Puerto Rico in the sense that we do have a population that may or may not everywhere answer them. that's right everywhere there are undocumented migrants uh, there is this potential um, for lower participation if they don't uh, go ahead. Now, the, 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 you know, this is being debated in the courts right now. I'm not sure uh, you know, how much your, your, your listeners are aware, but there's about, I believe, 12 state attorney generals that have presented a lawsuit to try to get the question taken off. And this, you know, this will eventually be decided by the Supreme Court of the United mm -hmm. States. Um, and it wouldn't be the first time that the Supreme Court gets involved right. in the inclusion or exclusion of census questions. And at some point next year, this will be resolved probably by the by the by the Supreme Court. Now that said, the uh, the CSAC, the, the Census Scientific Advisory Committee, previously before I, I became a member, had already established a series of concerns and had warned the Census Bureau about the potential impact of the inclusion of the question. And so uh, you know. In this meeting, there was, you know, the, the, we saw the results of what the Census Bureau had done, and, and they basically said, well, we're going to proceed to include it anyway because the benefits sort of outweigh the costs. And it, it wasn't discussed very much in this meeting um, because there's already an ongoing legal uh, process. But what was discussed was, to some extent, good news, which is that the Census Bureau will be doing a series of tests. Uh, using the community survey to determine the impact of the inclusion mm -hmm. of the citizenship question all over the United States to see whether when people see the citizenship question then they pull back and say hey I'm not going to send this questionnaire in you know uh, and, and so but here's the kicker Michelle they're going to do it all over the United States but not Puerto Rico okay. and so okay. you know we have a considerable population mm -hmm. of undocumented migrants here and you know our population of undocumented migrants are not necessarily the same as those in the United States. They come from a different country. They maybe they entered Puerto Rico in a different way than other undocumented entered the United States. And so, you know, it would be good for the test to be done here as well. So how can you make that happen? Is there any way to make that happen? Well, the only way I had was to recommend it as a member of the okay. CSAC, uh, the Census Scientific Advisory Committee, uh, accepted my recommendation and we recommended the Census Bureau choose one territory uh, in which to perform the uh, the same test to see whether you know in territories uh, we can expect a similar uh, effect on participation from the inclusion of the citizenship. And questions. when we will have an idea whether it'll be a go or not? Well, um, okay, yeah. Are, are they going to be doing this at a certain date? Yeah. So the, the what the Census Bureau director announced was that the test will take place during the summer of 2019. Okay. Uh, we'll, I'm not sure if they have the resources to do it in one of the territories. Um, I, I hope they do. Because uh, I think it's important to make sure that, for instance, in a place like Puerto Rico, we know what the impact on participation will be. But you know that's going to be ultimately decided in Washington uh, based on resources, and we will know sometime in the spring whether whether that recommendation gets accepted or not. Okay, and I I got the opportunity to read the memo, so I was able to see you know more or less what what was discussed. Although there's a lot <laughs> yes. in that memo, but I did see um, an, an area of discussion about reaching hard to count populations. Does that you know pertain to Puerto Rico? I believe it should, right? And then, if so, how is that going to be addressed? Absolutely. So, uh, 
precisely with many of the things we've discussed. So Hard to Count Populations is a program mm -hmm. the Census Bureau has as part of the decennial census to design strategies to identify populations that are hard to count and then do special efforts to make sure they participate. And so the citizenship question is a challenge for the hard to count uh, program. Um, Hurricane Maria's impact on our addresses are a challenge to the hard, hard to count population as well. And what they're doing with update leave is a way of responding through, hard, uh, through a logic of hard to count to make sure that, that uh, we make, you know, have the full participation of the people in Puerto Rico. Okay, so basically it's going to take uh, an well, army. <laughs> well, literally, <laughs> yes. Every 10 years, the, the Census Bureau hires uh, uh, tens of thousands, if not 100,000 people in the United States and Puerto Rico just to do the census. These are great temporary jobs that come along once every 10 years. Uh, and it's literally like an army walking the streets and checking addresses, checking to make sure we're counting everyone, making sure everyone's participating. Uh, there's a whole uh, media campaign uh, also associated with it, which will begin rolling out sometime in early 2020. And so, um, you know, all the work we're doing now is planning for that census, to make sure that that census is as high a quality as possible. And, you know, I've, I've dedicated many years of my life to, to, for this moment, and we've done a lot to help the Census Bureau. Uh, I'll tell you that for the first time, the Census Bureau is going to be planning the, 2020, the census of Puerto Rico using Puerto Rico's property tax uh, database, mm -hmm. which they've never had access to. I mean, uh, the famous CRIM mm -hmm. uh, and their uh, digital cataster, which is a geographic file showing all the properties and who owns what and what are the property values. This information is now finally in the hands of the Census Bureau, which it has been for most of the United States. Uh, except, Puerto except Puerto Rico until okay. this census. Now, I also saw in the memo that they're, um, that they're talking about, you know, when, when including U.S. territories, they're going to be working with FEMA, with the Federal Emergency Management Agency. So how, how does that work, and, and where do they come in? So one of the mo most interesting parts of the meeting had to do with how do you use census data to support disaster recovery. Um, the chairman of the committee uh, now is uh, Dr. Allison Plyer. Uh, she is uh, the director of the data center in New Orleans. And Katrina. after mm -hmm. Katrina, uh, Allison has become a sort of disaster data expert uh, all over the world. And, and she, she travels from place to place explaining how disasters have become a new normal and how um, statistical entities need to adjust to this new reality. And so, you know, it was, it was great to also bring our experience uh, with Maria to the table because the, the, the challenging thing is that every disaster is different. Um, and so from a statistical point of view, how do you prepare to measure things that are always so different and that's very difficult to anticipate? So one of the things that, that, that had to be said was that, you know, in the aftermath of a, of a disaster, um, the trade-off between reliability and timeliness changes. Uh, when you're doing any data product, any statistics, you can either make it very reliable uh, but not very timely, or you can make it more timely and you have to sort of, you know, maybe give way a little bit on the reliability. This is not something you can have both. You can't have your cake and, mm -hmm. and two. Uh -huh. There's a trade-off. And so, um, but in, in the Census Bureau has the gold standard of reliability and, you know, even if it takes us, you know, another year, we're going to make sure it's perfect. And that's always been very good for the Census Bureau. But the truth is in the new normal of disasters, of large-scale disasters, in the aftermath of a, of a natural disaster, we have a sort of fog of war, if you will, where it's uh, difficult to know what truth is and there's a lot of interest in knowing exactly what the truth is and what will happen. Is the population going to return? Did they go? How many? When are they going to come back? All of these questions are essential for investment, for recovery, for emergency. And so uh, the, it, it becomes the case that people don't really care as much as they would normally about reliability. They're willing to seed on that if they can just get it a little faster. And so that is a message that I, I took down to the Census Bureau. I think it's, it's important for them to realize that that's going on. Uh, maybe Washington, D.C. doesn't get hit by as many mm -hmm. disasters. But, you know, people, uh, you know, Allison spoke about New Orleans, and it was exactly the same experience we had here. You had uh, real estate developers interested in knowing, is the not Lower Ninth Ward being repopulated or not? Mm -hmm. um, and a very similar dynamic happened here. And what, what because the statistical agencies don't, have a quick fire way of responding to these incidents, what tends to happen is that places like the data center in New Orleans or even in Puerto Rico, the Institute of Statistics, 
we everyone shifts to saying, well, you know what, we are uh, we're going to start using other data sources to help us figure out how things are going. Mm -hmm. And in the case of New Orleans, for instance, they used uh, postal data to know how many active addresses were how many addresses were actively receiving mail, which is something mm -hmm. the postal service actually calculates. And can that be done here, or has it been done here? It can be done here, and it's something that that I in fact looked at one point. Um, the data was strange. It, it wasn't telling us of the sort of same picture, mm -hmm. and it had to do with with the geographic scale, the zip codes. It you know some would go up, some would go down. And like maybe people were shifting within Wait, Puerto sure, Rico, sure. but the number of houses doesn't really tell you very much about the number of people. You know, yeah. we can take a household and you know where two people usually live, we can fit a family of eight if we need right, to. Right. And so it, 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 it doesn't. It's not a great indicator. Also, what we, people really cared about was movement off island. Right, mm -hmm. and for that purpose, we quickly shifted, and it's, it's actually a data source that we've always looked at. But it became much more important: the number of pass air passenger movements, how many people were leaving Puerto Rico on a plane, how many were returning, and the net of that. And it showed a very clear pattern, just as one would kind of expect. Which is what? That how many people actually stayed and left? And do you have that number? Those numbers? So, in terms of air passenger movements, which is not exactly, it's not a perfect measure of migration, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's many other factors that come into it and you know these are numbers that uh, I uh, don't have off the top of my head okay. but I will tell you the pattern was that in October of 2017 uh, right after the hurricane almost 90,000 people left on net wow. now that is equivalent to what we would have seen in a whole year's worth mm -hmm. of the migration wave we were living before okay. so wow. that was very very dramatic and then, so November, December, that began to taper off, and by November, we finally began to see a net return, mm -hmm. significant net return. Okay. Um, now, and that then has tapered off slowly as well. So now we are back entering into the usual dynamics of the migration wave that existed before, mm -hmm. and I think on net we've lost, uh, you know, some ch good chunk of people. I, I, be hesitant to give you a specific number, but it is significant but, um, enough but to, it's, it's, you know, yes. to, to get to take get noticed. Oh yes, no, no. This this definitely had the the hur Hurricane Maria definitely had a long term impact on our population, and it's going to become very very clear uh, after we do the 2020 census. But in the meantime, with the data that we do have, which is imperfect, uh, in the next month, the Census Bureau will finally publish. Mm -hmm the 2018 population estimate for Puerto Rico. And that will be the first official estimate of how much the population fell between 2017 and 2018. And it'll give us a, a good sense of you know, how much more Hurricane Maria has subtracted from our population. And that number then should be used by everybody concerned about the economy and, and the future, right? I don't know if it should, but it definitely will be. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes, no, I mean, I think it's, uh, it's gonna be an important uh, gauge uh, metric in terms of you know uh, where our population stu stood this summer 2018 um, but uh, it you know it is possible that Hurricane Maria's effect may last more than a year right sure. now from now on the effects are going to be really really marginal and they're going to take longer to unwind mm -hmm. um, so I, I would expect that you know even with the migration wave uh, going and overall us showing a net outward migration over the next year, it's probably lower than it would have been without the Maria return effect, okay? Which might be small, but might be persistent. I mean, keep thinking about those families who may still be staying with family members, or maybe they're in a motel somewhere in, in, in FEMA money, or maybe they're waiting for, for you know, things to get back here better. It's still possible a year or two out that some families may still be waiting for the right opportunity to and return. And let's not even think about the fact that it, another storm may hit no. again soon. Let's not even go right. There, right? I, 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 what I just said assumes <laughs> no other right. storm. Right. Uh, right. Another right. storm would again change everything and once again, and it would also really impact the 2020 census. It would. Um, the per taking uh, and the undertaking of a of the census in April 2020. After something like you know a Maria Part Two in in the fall of 2019 would be would be uh, really challenging for the census. Bureau. How expensive is it to to run the census? Do you have any idea? Or um, in general, perhaps how expensive so is, is the census? So, as I recall, the 2010 census in Puerto Rico was about a billion dollars. Okay. Yeah. 
So should it be more or less now? Well, every decade inflation tends to yeah. add some, some money to that. So well, yes. And also the fact that you said that it's going to take more people. To, to yes. Out yes. Well. Now there are there's less population. Sure. So uh, if the Census Bureau can design some strategies, and the also the other thing is that this time around they're going to be using the internet much mm -hmm. more extensively. Um, there's actually going to be an opportunity to answer it online. Oh, um, most people are going to receive a letter saying you can log into this website, enter this passcode, and you can begin filling it in right away. Okay. Um, and so, um, you know, if that fails, then all these other sort of mechanisms kick in. Now, during the meeting, going back to that, mm -hmm. there was another term that I didn't really understand, and perhaps you can talk about it in, you know, rice and beans, like we say. This thing about the differential privacy issue. What yes. is that about, and how does that pertain to Puerto Rico, if at all? No, that's a really important topic. Um, you know, the Census Bureau and other official statistical agencies publish hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of tables. And to the extent that you publish more and more tables and more and more data, um, it becomes easier to um, detect and identify specific characteristics of the individuals that you are trying to represent. And so um, over the past uh, decade especially, there has been a growing recognition, uh, especially by due to the research done at the Census Bureau, that um, it is very possible to reconstruct the micro data, the individual data of previous censuses. Um, now this is uh, actually a ma mathematical theorems that have been developed at the Census Bureau using cryptographics and so um, they, for the 2020 census, they're going to be introducing a new concept called differential privacy which uh, it, it adds some noise to the data that actually makes it impossible to reconstruct the databases, okay. and so um, it's uh, it's going to be an important change. I don't, it, you know, we need to start educating users about this. We need to start educating policymakers, uh, especially those who will be redistricting, mm -hmm. um, because you know this has the potential to confuse a lot of folks, and it, it's being done to protect the confidentiality of uh, populations, of vulnerable populations, make sure that everyone's you know, feels comfortable that, that their individual data will not be made available uh, out there and that it won't be used for other purposes other than statistical. But at the same time, um, we need to be aware that it's not straight the counts. And you know, we're not just counting the number of houses in that block. It's the number of houses in that block adjusted to account for differential privacy in a way that limits the ability of people to reconstruct mm -hmm. exactly the characteristics of the population. There. So people should be um, should have peace of mind that their data will be protected. In other words, people should have peace of mind that the Census Bureau is the leading innovative you know research center to identify these risks and deal with them way before um, the people that you know could take advantage of this are even aware of how to take advantage of this. All right. So is there anything else that you know we we should discuss? I think that um, uh, there were some things that uh, we could have mentioned. So the, uh, there's this really important tool of the Census Bureau called On the, er, on the Map for Emergency Management that I wanted to mention. Um, the, the Census Bureau has this tool, it's a map, it shows all sorts of data on a very small geographic scale and it's used to support emergency management, emergency planning, disaster recovery, mitigation. That's where FEMA comes in. And that is, and that is definitely a tool that FEMA that FEMA comes in and, and FEMA should be using. Um, the the thing is that Puerto Rico has never been in this tool, and so this is you know after Maria, this has become a really important priority. And and it, and it seems to me that you know uh, the Census Bureau and the government of Puerto Rico should devote uh, whatever resources are necessary to make sure that Puerto Rico gets on the map. Uh, it's the, the tool is called On the Map, and one of the sub modules is On the Map for Emergency Management. And so, uh, my biggest fear is that another hurricane might come along, and we still are not on the map. Um, the government of Puerto Rico has part of important tasks to do related to this. Um, they they need to provide certain data. They've been providing some of this data, but it hasn't been of adequate quality. So the Census Bureau has not been able to include Puerto Rico in all of the products, including specifically on the map. And you know, this was a, this is a work that 
was being done by the government of Puerto Rico, so not just on the hands of the Census Bureau, but um, both, of the, both parties need to come together and make this happen, because the worst thing that can happen is another hurricane comes along, and we can't even really you know, estimate the impacts of the hurricane because Puerto Rico wasn't on the map. Specifically, who needs to take care of this? The planning board? The so this would be uh, the Department of Labor together with the Puerto Rico Institute of Statistics. Okay. So let's wrap this up. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you for sharing your expertise on this. It's definitely an ongoing matter. Perhaps we can touch base again in a couple of months to see how things are, are moving along because the census is something that is unavoidable. And, and Puerto Rico needs to you know, be quite included, right? Absolutely. I'm very happy to come back here in a couple of months and continue talking about these topics. Thank you so much. Thank you.